Welcome back to another episode of This Week on Channel 9. I'm your host, Christina Warren, still in the cast, and in honor of my favorite early aughts emo band, Dashboard Confessional, I, uh, I'm going to make as many Dashboard references as possible this show. So let's get into the news. First up, you won't be living in your letters now that Azure Event Grid has reached general availability. The Azure Event Grid is a fully managed event routing service that simplifies the development of event-based applications. This provides multiple ways to react to these events, including using serverless offerings such as Azure Functions or Azure Logic Apps, using Azure Automation, or even custom webhooks for your code or third-party services. This means any service running anywhere can publish events and subscribe to reliable Azure events. Check out the announcement blog post and the overview video on YouTube for more information. Next up, feel vindicated that TypeScript 2.7 is out now. Visual Studio 2015 Update 3 users can install it now, and it will be coming very soon to Visual Studio Code. Sublime Text users can install it now, too, from Package Control. Big new features include easier ECMAScript modules op operability, prettier pretty output, and stricter class property checks. Saints and sailors alike will love a new blog post from Pu Chi Chan about the refresh of Microsoft's Jenkins offering in the Azure Marketplace. Like the previous offer, this uh, one allows customers to run a Jenkins master on a Linux VM running Ubuntu 16.04 LTS, and the price is the cost of running the software components and Azure infrastructure deployed by the solution template. If you are looking to run Jenkins in the cloud, you will have full control over the Jenkins master you set up. On Channel 9 this week, our friend Burke Holland is back for another episode of Five Things, this time focusing on everyone's favorite framework, React. And don't worry, there won't be any screaming infidelities nonsense, even as Burke struggles to get the latest version of React to work on his machine. So be sure to check that out. Also on Channel 9 is the latest episode of Gals, this time with Microsoft's Executive Vice President of Business Development, Peggy Johnson. As Executive Vice President of Business Development, Peggy Johnson is responsible for driving strategic partnerships and transactions to accelerate growth for Microsoft and its customers. She also works with the VC community and oversees investments made by Microsoft Ventures. This episode is really great, and so don't wait and watch it right away. Our friend James Montemagno is back with a great blog post about how to build VSTS slash TFS tasks with TypeScript and code. And even though James isn't much of a JavaScript guy, there were no sharp hints of new tiers in this tutorial. In container news, Docker for Windows gained Kubernetes support this week, which is great. And everyone's favorite developer, Scott Hanselman, uses this as an opportunity to walk users through setting up Kubernetes and Docker for Windows and getting it set up to run ASP.NET Core. Scott, you have stolen my heart with this tutorial. In other Kubernetes news, Red Hat acquired CoreOS for $250 million. So CoreOS now knows where there is gold. Now, we usually don't cover non-Microsoft news on Channel 9, but since CoreOS is such a huge part of the Kubernetes community, and Microsoft has partnerships with both companies, including CoreOS support on Azure, I wanted to mention this. Also, congrats to the CoreOS team for your great exit. As the saying goes, the secret's in the telling, which is why it's great that there is a way to manage Azure secrets in GitHub repos. Azure secrets are authentication credentials that should not be made public. Like, keep those locked away. These include things like passwords, private keys, database connection strings, and storage account keys that are managed by Azure tenants. To help protect customers, Azure runs something called Credential Scanner, um, aka CredScan. And CredScan monitors all incoming commits on GitHub and checks for specific Azure tenant secrets, like Azure Subscription Management Certificates and Azure SQL um, uh, connection strings. Even better, there is a CredScan code analyzer in early preview for Visual Studio as part of the Microsoft Dev Labs extension, meaning you can start to check stuff for secrets while you're coding stuff. I have a friend who once had his AWS key stolen from a WordPress plugin he was hosting on GitHub, and he like, realized that he was $10,000 have been charged to his account. So be careful out there, and I'm glad we have services like this to keep people safe. And finally, it's time for my pick of the week. And hands down, this is the best pick I can ever remember. OK, maybe not, but it's still really cool. This week on Channel 9's favorite eccentric billionaire, Elon Musk, was selling flamethrowers 
not really flamethrowers, earlier this week, backed by his boring company. Now, that alone would be newsworthy, even if the device is less flamethrower and more super cool looking blowtorch. But the best part is that Musk has already sold out of these devices, meaning he sold 20,000 of them for $500 a pop. I love it. Well, that does it for me. I'm off to fight the good fight, and I will be at an event next week, so we may not have an episode of the show. We're not really sure yet, but we will see you soon. If you're watching on YouTube before, be sure to hit the subscribe button down below and also turn on notifications and like our video. See you next time.